Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I'm going to give a little follow-up video to the phase lock loop tutorial that I made earlier this week. So, in the previous video, I took one CD4046 phase lock loop chip and used it with a potentiometer as a voltage controlled oscillator. I then fed that voltage controlled frequency into a second CD4046 that I actually had set up as the full phase lock loop control loop where it had a phase detector which then was filtered and then controlled another voltage controlled oscillator which then fed back on itself and you got you know you reproduced the other frequency. Um, great for the tutorial to show you kind of the characteristics of each component um, a little bit harder to understand as far as the implications of how useful it is because duplicating a frequency to itself um, why don't you just use the first frequency uh, so I want to give you a little bit simpler example of how a phase lock loop is going to be real valuable so I've made almost no modifications to the circuit at all I've just changed how I'm modulating the voltage controlled oscillator and then what I'm looking at on the output here and then I'm going to show you how we can actually use phase lock loops to receive FM or frequency modulated radio. So looking at the input, um, originally into the VCO um, we had just a 5k potentiometer that I changed with a screwdriver. I've now replaced that with 200k ohm resistors as a voltage divider and then a 0.1 microfarad capacitor uh, from my iPod. If you look at kind of this configuration you might notice that this is kind of the opposite of the low pass filter I showed you and explained in the previous video. Uh, that's because this is very similar. This is called a high pass filter. So what we're doing is from the audio we're passing in all of the frequencies that are above DC and then we're using these 200k ohm resistors to bias the signal here in the middle of our power supply. So with a 5 volt power supply these 200k ohm resistors biases this at 2.5 volts and then by feeding the audio into it it then adds to that and makes it go, uh, you know, change around the 2.5 volts in the middle. That then goes to the VCO which then changes the VCO's frequency. Another thing I changed was the, in the previous tutorial I had the VCO tuned to run at about a thousand hertz down to you know more like a hundred hertz which was you know because I wanted you to be able to hear it and I wanted to be able to you know show it to you. I've changed it a little bit and I've now had it I, I swapped out one of the capacitors is I had a 0.1 microfarad and I've switched it out for a 330 picofarad capacitor which means that now the VCO generally runs at about 100 kilohertz, which is well above audio range. Um, we're doing that because we need the VCO to be running at something faster than the audio, or else we're not going to be able to convey enough information about it. So, at this point, we have 100 kilohertz, plus or minus the audio coming in. So if we put in a positive sign, you know, on, so on the positive side of a sound wave the frequency would go up and on the negative side of the sound wave the frequency would go down. So this would essentially be everything that is happening in your local FM radio stations transmitter. Is they would go and then they would um, is instead of 100 kilohertz they would modulate this up to you know 90 or 100 megahertz and they would then blast this over the airwaves from the top of some mountain or very tall tower and you would then receive it with your radio. Um, doing the actual RF part is, a lot, is kind of a pain in the ass and a lot of work. So we're just gonna have it be one magical wire. So just take my word that um, the left and the right sides of the breadboard right here are totally separate, all right? So at that point we have a 100, 100 kilohertz square wave. Um, this is 100 kilohertz up here as we have a five microseconds per division, um, so you know, that's 10 microseconds, so, you know, 100 kilohertz. And we feed that as the F in to the standard, you know, phase lock loop, control loop that I showed you last time as well. Phase detector, 
low pass filter, VCO, and then frequency out, and you feed that back into the phase detector. Now, what we've changed is that, you know, I've actually designed a good low pass filter, is I happen to be using a 1K ohm resistor and then a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So that's, you know, significantly faster than the ridiculously slow 100K ohm, 10 microfarad, like one second filter that we we're using last time, because now we actually need to, you know, have this loop follow a modulated signal is this frequency is going to be changing. And so likewise, once the loop is locked, the frequency out is going to be changing the same amount. So it'll be about 100 kilohertz plus or minus this audio modulation that we're you know, gonna be interested in. But this isn't what we're gonna be interested in. Um, if you were multiplying this frequency, you'd be interested in the F out. But what, what we're actually interested in is this VCO control voltage because this VCO and this VCO, which are theoretically, you know, a couple dozen miles apart, are tuned for the same frequency. And so when you input a control voltage here, it's the same control voltage that the radio station originally used to make this. And since we know this and this are the same, this and there, control voltage must also be the same. So we can then look at this signal, we're going to, we're going to need to buffer it and amplify it a little bit um, because the low pass filter doesn't like to have you try and pull a lot of power out of it. Um, again, transfer functions, um, you know, if, 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 if all of this has made sense so far that probably should make sense for you. So we're going to buffer it, amplify it. I just used an LM358 op amp with a, you know, 100 times gain on it. Um, and then we pipe that out as our audio and hopefully, 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 hopefully what I pipe in here from my iPod, we will then see here or here, 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 here. We will, we will with our ears experience the sensation here of what we had here. <clears throat> right. Anyways. So, before we listen to it, here we've got the channel 1 and channel 2. So this is the voltage controlled oscillator in our radio station, and this is our voltage controlled oscillator in our phase lock loop in our car. All right? And as you can see, they're locked. We're using a type 2 phase detector, so they're in phase, and they're running at about 100 kilohertz. Now, I take my handy dandy iPod and start playing music with it and you can see these waves start jumping around it is as there's high you know high uh, positive signals uh, it goes up in frequency and when there's negative signals it goes down in frequency um, it's kind of hard to describe like bass versus treble um, on an oscilloscope you know if I had a spectrum analyzer <coughs> um, if I had a spectrum analyzer, you could see this really, really well, but um, the main thing is the, the bigger the volume, the bigger the change, because that's the magnitude of the signal is going to be what deviates. So if we were to turn the volume down, you could notice that with a lower volume, uh, which is just a smaller amplitude of the same frequencies, you can notice that it changes frequency less. You turn crank the volume back up, and the frequency changes more. Um, this actually becomes a disadvantage because FM radio stations want to be heard really well, which means they want to modulate this frequency as much as they can, which means that they, in music, tend to take out a lot of the dynamic range, is the louds are loud and the quiets are loud, because they want to always be heard, and the wider that you modulate the signal, the better you're heard. All right. As you can see, is you might be able to see kind of that the bottom isn't perfectly locked to it. This is because the you know because of the time delay of the phase lock loop and how quickly the signal's changing. Um, this is inevitably going to be a little bit behind it. But hopefully, in a moment, um, when we plug the speaker in, you'll be able to dramatically hear um, this music transmitted through our 
you know, a ether here and then received in our car. So now we'll plug it in for the moment of truth. And we have, um, hopefully to your much delight, um, a rather low fidelity version of 5AM by Something a la Mode. Great band, by the way, uh, French techno. Um, and then to try and demonstrate to you kind of how important the filter is here. So I've got, right now, the low pass filter in the control loop. So in this control loop right here, I currently have a 1k ohm resistor and then a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. If we were to slow that down by an order of magnitude, so replace the 1k ohm resistor with a 10k ohm resistor, we would lose much of the treble here because this control loop would become so slow it wouldn't be able to servo fast enough to track this modulated frequency in. So this is with it, with the fast low pass filter on it. And you can kind of hear it's a little bit noisier and it's kind of have lost a lot of the treble. It is the, the singer, the rapper, Kay Flay. Kay Flay is a wonderful woman um, who we very much want to listen to. So we want to design this low pass filter correctly. So we're gonna put that one K ohm resistor back in and K-Play is back. So this has been Kenneth giving you a uh, reasonable first kind of, you know, so this is a basic application of a phase lock loop. Um, kind of the example that I used for the tutorial has a lot of sophisticated applications, so it actually is more impressive than it seems for just being able to recreate the frequency that you had. Um, so this is one application. Again, there's tons and tons and tons of them. Uh, so go forth and try and use them in your projects. Don't be afraid. Phase lock loops aren't that hard. This has been Kenneth. Enjoy.